I took care of the paralyzed Nami for five years. On the day of our wedding, she left me without hesitation and ran off with her first love. I looked at the bright red invitation on the table and calmly said, Congratulations. But she went mad, begging me not to leave her. Chapter 1 As I adjusted my suit tie for the seventh time, Nami arrived. My parents sighed in relief. It felt like we'd all been holding our breath since the wedding started. She walked up to me, trying hard to force a smile. The MC had been stalling for half an hour, trying to smooth things over. At this moment, he hurriedly handed over the rings, hoping the ceremony would end quickly. I picked up the ring, intending to put it on her finger. But just then, the chapel door was pushed open forcefully. Nami. At the sound of that voice, Nami's hand recoiled as if she'd been shocked. I followed her gaze and saw Ken standing there. He was backlit, and it wasn't until he walked closer that I noticed how terrifyingly pale he looked. His lips were colorless, and his entire being radiated a sense of desolation. But his eyes were shining exceptionally bright as they focused on Nami. Nami, I'm sorry I'm late. Nami's eyes immediately reddened, and when she looked at me again, her gaze was filled with overwhelming guilt. Yes, guilt. She didn't need to say anything. I already understood her choice. I chuckled bitterly and clenched my left hand tightly. The sound of chopsticks falling to the ground broke the silence in the banquet hall, and murmurs began to rise. My fingers unconsciously rubbed the ring in my palm, it was her favorite brand, her favorite style, we had picked it out together, symbolizing belonging to each other forever. We just stood there, staring at each other, I was on the stage, she was off it, I didn't rush her, I wanted her to willingly marry me. Ken coughed a few times at the perfect moment, almost pleading as he looked at Nami. Nami suddenly took two steps closer to me, Hero, I'm sorry, but Ken needs me now, what about me? Don't I need her too? All these years of companionship and care were ultimately outweighed by Ken's simple words, I need you. She stopped looking at me, turned around, and resolutely took Ken's hand, running toward the light streaming in from the door, as if that was the happiness she had long awaited. I stood there, watching their determined backs. She didn't look back, not even once. Chapter 2 Nami Song and I have known each other since childhood. Our parents were good friends, so we could be considered childhood sweethearts. In elementary school, Uncle Song's business encountered problems, and unable to cope, he chose to commit suicide. The atmosphere at home was gloomy, and Aunt Song cried every day. A few days later, she also followed Uncle Song. During that time, anyone who saw Nami would feel a deep pity for her. She was like a bird with broken wings, fallen into the mud. She had no strength to resist her bad luck, and she couldn't even protect herself. She would bow her head and shrink into a corner whenever she saw people, and she didn't like to talk. Her relatives saw her as a burden shuttling her from one house to another. In the end, my parents, feeling sorry for her, took Nami into our home. At first, I didn't like her very much. She took away some of my parents' love, but my parents always said that Nami was a pitiful child, that she had nothing and no one else but us. Even if we did everything we could, the wounds in her heart could never be healed. Gradually, protecting Nami became a habit ingrained deep in my bones. Watching her become more cheerful and bright each day made me happy as well. Back then, Nami loved to cling to me often stubbornly shaking my arm, not letting me play with others. She said that she only had me, and if I chose someone else, she wouldn't see any meaning in continuing to live. Every time she said that, my heart ached. She would announce domineeringly, only I can marry brother Hero. You're not allowed to marry anyone else. How could I ever choose anyone else? It had always been her, but after high school, everything changed. She fell in love with someone else. I first heard of Ken on my birthday. It was the first time she didn't spend my birthday with me. She went to the outskirts instead. I was so scared that I didn't even have time to blow out the candles before I went out to find her. When I found her, she was nestled in Ken's arms, playing with sparklers. In the small glow of the lights, she looked up at Ken as if he was her whole world. My heart tightened, and I almost fled in panic. That rascal Ken, what right did he have? Always with his overly long hair, always surrounded by a gang of rowdy people, and obsessed with speed and excitement. Someone so unreliable. So irresponsible, what could he possibly give Nami? Protecting her, offering her everything good on a silver platter had almost become second nature to me. So, naturally, I went to warn Ken. I told him he wasn't good enough for Nami and warned him to stay away from her. If he wanted compensation, I was willing to give him money. That night, Nami barged into my room and threw a bank card in my face. Hero, Ken and I aren't as fortunate as you, but we still have our dignity. Do you think that by humiliating him, I'll look down on him and get together with you? You really make me sick. My lips moved, wanting to explain, but my throat was so dry that no sound came out. I couldn't believe it. This was the girl I had protected since childhood. This was the person I had loved for so many years. She said I made her sick. Sick. Nami looked at me angrily. From now on, 
My business is none of your concern, or I'll die with Ken. My vision went dark, and I collapsed onto the bed. She was already gone, like a gust of wind. It turns out, I never truly held her, nor did I ever really understand her. I thought she was a flower that needed protection, sunlight, and rain, but she was a wind with no center. What she wanted was freedom. That night, she didn't come home, and I didn't go out to find her. It seemed like I had lost the reason to go after her. This decision haunted me for many years. I didn't sleep that night. I just sat on the sofa, waiting for her until dawn. The next time I heard about her, she was lying in a hospital bed, her entire body wrapped in bandages. You couldn't even recognize her original appearance. She was so proud, so vain. Ken had taken her street racing the previous night, and they had crashed on a curve. Her whole body was covered in fractures, and her legs could no longer stand. After the accident, Ken disappeared without a trace. It was a street cleaner who called 911. I regretted it so much that I slapped myself twice, blood seeping from the corners of my mouth. Then I wiped my tears away and went to stay by Nami's side. I was determined to help her walk again. I started accompanying Nami through her rehabilitation, helping her restore her appearance. She fell countless times and cried countless times, and I was always there. When the pain was too much, she would bite my arm, leaving it bloody and raw, and then cry and apologize to me. Whenever she lost hope after another fall, she would dump her food on me, but I didn't mind any of it. Nami would say to me, Hero, when I get better, I'll marry you. I'll wear the most beautiful wedding dress and be the most beautiful bride, and you have to give me the most perfect wedding. I would always smile and agree, looking forward to the day she would marry me. In truth, every second we were together, regardless of whether Nami could stand or not, I wanted to marry her. We persisted for five years and created a miracle, Nami could finally walk like a normal person. We dated, got engaged, and then anxiously awaited our wedding day, just like any loving couple. But the night before the wedding, Nami received a message. Without saying a word, she rushed out of the house. I knew who it was, other than Ken. I couldn't think of anyone else. I stood by the window, watching them hold each other tightly, a pair of star-crossed lovers, entwined in the rain. When she came back, she didn't say a word, and I pretended nothing had happened. I wanted to make one last bet, a bet that they were only saying goodbye, a bet that all these years of companionship weren't worthless. Now, it seems I lost, perhaps, I never won. Chapter 3 I took a deep breath and slowly exhaled, forcing a polite smile as I took the microphone from the MC. Everyone, I'm sorry. But today's wedding is cancelled. However, please enjoy the food and drinks, and I hope you have a good time. My parents looked upset, but they couldn't bring themselves to scold me. My mother held me close, quietly sobbing. I kept smiling, trying to comfort them. I didn't need to ask around. I already knew that our family had become a laughingstock. I wasn't afraid of the gossip. I just felt sorry for my parents, who had poured their hearts into two children, only to be heartbroken by both. Looking at the wrinkles on my parents' faces, I realized that they had really aged. For years, I had focused entirely on Nami, with her occupying both my heart and mind. I had forgotten how long it had been since I had spent quality time with my parents. Mom. Dad. I'm sorry. From now on, I'll spend more time with you. My mother gently patted my head, just like when I was a child, and carefully said, Alright, our hero is the most filial child. In a few days, I'll find a good girl for you, and we'll go on a date. My father chimed in. Exactly. How could my son not have anyone? I smiled helplessly, not wanting to talk about it. Since the wedding, I hadn't returned to the house Nami and I had bought together. I was wondering if it was time to sell it. I didn't expect Nami to show up at my parents' house, crying and still speaking so bluntly. Hero, are you still mad? About the wedding. I'm sorry. But Ken is sick, cancer. The doctors say he might only have three months left. Hero, I don't think we can be so selfish. Let me stay with him. Okay, just for this short time. When I come back, we can have our wedding. All right. I softly asked her, how long is a short time, until he dies, a week, a month, a year, slap. I slightly turned my head as a burning pain spread across my face, Nami's long nails had scratched my eyelid, and a drop of blood fell onto my eyelashes, I slowly touched my face, realizing what had happened, Nami stared at me with hatred in her eyes, it seemed that even this slap wasn't enough to ease her anger, I chuckled softly, you can keep hitting me, until you're satisfied, she froze her brows furrowing slightly, I, I didn't mean to, I believed she didn't mean to, it was her instinct to protect Ken, at that thought, the wound on my eyelid began to hurt, it hurt so much that my heart trembled, my eyes burned, and my nose ached, I'm sorry, she hurried to explain, but couldn't find the right words, how could she explain this, when it comes to feelings, even I can't explain them, I also didn't understand why, even though Ken appeared so late, Nami loved him so deeply, my mother looked at me with pity, 
Angrily calling Nami an ungrateful wretch and telling her to leave, Nami didn't move, just stood there with tears in her eyes, looking at me. In the past, whenever she looked at me like this, I would agree to whatever she wanted. But this time, I couldn't tell if her tears were genuine. Nami, let's break up. When I said those words, my heart ached sharply, but what followed was a long lost sense of relief. Nami suddenly became furious. Hero, are you threatening me? I shook my head. There's no point in threatening you anymore. No one will wait for you forever. I'm human too, and I also get tired. She looked at me thoughtfully, as if trying to figure out how much of what I said was true. Are you mad because I went with Ken? I already explained it to you. He's sick. We have a lifetime together, but he only has a few days left. Hero, you're so kind. You can understand, right? I nodded and said, yes, but what I'm talking about now is our relationship. Nami, I don't want to continue this anymore. She suddenly smiled. Hero. I know you're angry. Calm down first. I won't bother you for the next few days. With that, she left as if fleeing. Nami thought I was throwing a tantrum. I was also surprised that all the years of attachment and reluctance seemed to disappear the moment she threw away the ring. Like morning mist, vanishing as soon as the sun rises. Chapter 4 Lately, I've been accompanying my mother to visit old friends and attending various matchmaking dinners that have been arranged for me. To help my parents move on more quickly, I've had to put on a brave face and go along with it. I had just seen off a woman who, like me, was forced into the situation and had no intention of pursuing a relationship. I was mentally and physically exhausted. Rough time with the matchmaking. A woman beside me offered a cigarette. I looked closely. Is that Mika? Have I changed that much? Mika asked with a playful smile. Her demeanor sharp and confident. I relaxed quite a bit. Want to grab a bite? My treat. She nodded her head, signaling me to go inside. Mika was my high school classmate and was also Nami's close friend during school. There were rumors that she was a habitual thief, and I had often advised Nami to stay away from her. But Nami, being the loyal friend she was, defended Mika staunchly. So my impression of Mika was quite negative. I never imagined I'd willingly ask her out for a meal. But it was during this meal that a seed of doubt was planted in my mind. Mika had indeed changed a lot. She was no longer shy but had become witty and humorous. She mentioned that over the years, she had been involved in protecting endangered animals and had even encountered real-life danger. By the end of the meal, I could hardly connect her to the old Mika I once knew. She had seen the world, experienced far more than I ever had. When I noticed the thick calluses on her palms, I couldn't help but feel a deep sense of admiration for her. As I was driving her home, I said, let's have dinner again sometime. I wanted to hear more about the world I had never seen. I had been stuck here for too long. She nodded playfully, but I didn't expect it to happen so soon. On Monday, when I went to work, I saw Mika. She was my new assistant. Chapter 5 since Mika started working at the company, the atmosphere has improved a lot. At work, she showed another side of herself, gentle, attentive, and always treating everyone with kindness. She was also incredibly professional and emotionally stable in her work. Recently, the company had been struggling with a project. Communication with the other party was difficult, and everyone was getting discouraged. Mika, with a smile, bought coffee for the project team and told everyone to take a few days off. I'm not sure how, but she made a phone call and the other party agreed to talk with us. It was a pleasant surprise. When our colleagues teased her, she playfully flicked her hair and said, I have my ways. Because of a business trip related to this project, I had to go back to the former marital home to sort out some things. Since I was in a hurry, I brought Mika with me. As we were going upstairs, she joked, Is this going to be awkward? I chuckled, It's just a house, an empty one at that. I had no hesitation in opening the door and letting Mika in. But as soon as we walked in, we saw Nami and Ken sitting on the sofa, holding hands and watching TV affectionately. Chapter 6 In the room, by the television, there was still the music box I had once bought for Nami. The vase we picked out together was now empty on the dining table. Even our wedding photo was still hanging on the wall. Nami had trampled all over our past. This was the home we had planned to live in together, and she couldn't wait to bring another man into it. I pointed at the wedding photo and asked, Do you need me to take it down for you? Nami looked a bit embarrassed but tried to keep her composure. Don't misunderstand. We, we don't have anything going on, I don't want to know about your business, but this house will be up for sale soon, so I'll have to ask you both to leave. I turned to Mika and instructed, get this house listed tomorrow. Nami's hysteria halted, and she stared at Mika in disbelief. Mika had changed so much that even her former best friend couldn't recognize her. Nami, long time no see. Nami's initial fierceness quickly turned into unease, and she looked at us searchingly. Hero, why are you with her? Does it concern you? That remark successfully enraged Nami, and she lunged at Mika, trying to hit her. I reacted quickly, blocking her, but without realizing my strength, I pushed Nami to the ground. 
I instinctively wanted to help her up but then caught myself and stood back. Sorry, I didn't control my strength. But Nami, you need to apologize to Mika. Nami looked at me, bewildered. Apologize? You want me to apologize to her? I nodded. She stubbornly lifted her head to look at me, her eyes gradually reddening and filling with tears. It was that same expression she always used to force me to back down. But now, looking at her tears, all I felt was annoyance. Seeing that I wasn't moved, Nami dropped her pretense of grievance and restraint. Hero, I will never apologize to a thief. I glanced nervously at Mika, but she seemed unbothered. I said, Nami, when you leave, please leave the key. I'll sell the house as soon as possible. She seemed to grasp my resolve, and after a moment of silence, she crouched on the floor and burst into loud sobs. In all these years, I had never seen her like this, and I awkwardly thought of going to comfort her. Ken finally seemed to snap out of it and shoved me aside to help Nami up. Cough, cough. Hero, how can you treat Nami like this? Just because she didn't marry you for my sake, no matter what, she's still your sister. How can you be so heartless? The smugness in his eyes stung me. He was laughing at me, laughing at how all these years of companionship had become a joke, laughing at how all these years of deep affection had become worthless. Get out. Ken's chest heaved, his face turning ashen as he began coughing violently. Nami glared at me hatefully, grabbed Ken, and stormed out. She turned back and shouted at me, Hero, you've gone too far, it's just a broken down house, and you're using it to humiliate us, we'll leave right now, and I'll never come back. You better not regret this. I wearily leaned against the sofa the argument leaving me with a headache. Mika hesitated before coming over to support me, softly reminding me, we need to get to the airport. Chapter 7. Mika handles work with ease. With her around, negotiations are incredibly efficient. She speaks several languages, and her wine critiques leave the other party nodding in agreement. I couldn't understand why someone like her would have stolen things back in school, but now, I admit I'm drawn to her, curious to know more about her. Just as my curiosity was beginning to blossom, Nami sent me a video late at night. In the video, Mika was on a yacht, wearing a figure-hugging gown, gracefully holding a glass of wine. I couldn't hear what she was saying to the three or four men around her, but she was laughing freely and openly. Nami said, Hero, don't be fooled by her. I'll be waiting for you at home. I clenched my phone tightly. What kind of person is Mika? Really? Chapter 8 Mika transferred to our school during our second year of high school. Back then, she was always quiet, very pretty but not very talkative, and her grades were exceptional. Later. Some classmates noticed that she was often picked up and dropped off by luxury cars. Because of these rumors, she became even more silent and had no friends. But Nami started sticking to her like glue, and I had the occasional chance to talk to her. In my memory, Mika was particularly gentle, with dimples when she smiled. One day, on the way home, Nami secretly told me that Mika's mother was the mistress of a rich man. Although I was surprised, I knew it wasn't right to comment on someone else's private affairs, and I reminded Nami not to spread it around. But somehow, the rumor spread, and everyone knew about it. Nami even blamed me in front of Mika for spreading it. To prove my innocence, I investigated the source of the rumor. To my shock, it pointed back to both me and Nami. I could swear on anything that I never said a word, not even in my sleep. Given how fiercely Nami accused me, she obviously didn't say anything either. Could it be that someone overheard us talking? In the end, the matter was left unresolved. Mika soon transferred to another school and we only heard occasional updates about her, winning awards, going abroad, but no one knew any specifics. Chapter 9 On the last day of the business trip, the project team finally had a chance to relax, and everyone clamored to go to a bar. Mika, when drunk, was both clingy and adorable, refusing to be pried off the sofa, I rarely saw her like this, and, holding back my laughter, I managed to get her back to the hotel, finally breathing a sigh of relief, after settling her on the bed. I went to the bathroom to wet a towel, intending to wipe her face. When I came out, Mika was sitting upright on the edge of the bed, her eyes unfocused as she stared at me. I chuckled and handed her the towel. Drunkard, if you're awake, wipe your face yourself. She didn't move and suddenly spoke. Hero, I like you. What? She sniffled, her eyes wide, taking deep breaths and even giving herself a little pep talk. Her adorable expression made me laugh again. I liked you from the moment I first saw you after transferring in the second year. Even after all these years, I still like you. Back then, you were with Nami, but now you're single. Can I chase after you now? She likes me. Amid my shock, I felt a faint sweetness in my heart. But before I could gather my thoughts, Mika slumped back onto the bed and quickly fell asleep. I was left sitting there, unsettled and lost in thought. I carefully considered my feelings for Mika. After spending time with her these past few days, it would be a lie to say I wasn't moved. Her charm is impossible to ignore, and being with her makes me feel like there's so much I can do. 
I don't feel powerless, helpless, or resigned. She's the kind of girl who brings vitality to those around her. I think anyone would be drawn to her, would fall in love with her. But I'm puzzled. Back then, Nami was already with Ken. Why did she lie to Mika, saying that we were in a relationship? Chapter 10 Not long after returning to the company, rumors about Mika's mother being the mistress of a wealthy man began spreading like wildfire again. I specifically ordered everyone not to talk about it at the company, but the effect was the opposite, because Mika had helped the company secure a partnership through her own connections. My attempts to stop the gossip only made people believe the rumors were true. I felt both sorry and a bit heartbroken for her. Remembering her timid and helpless expression from high school, I felt a pang of guilt. Now, under my watch, something like this was happening all over again. I had caused her to be hurt once more. I suggested that she take a few days off, or maybe go on a trip. I even offered to accompany her if she didn't mind. But Mika rejected all of it. She was no longer the pitiful little girl from back then. She didn't care at all. Continuing to greet people warmly and staying focused on her work, this only strengthened my belief that even if the rumor was true, Mika was innocent. She couldn't choose who her parents were, could she? Soon, everyone's attention was diverted when an established company we had just approached expressed interest in partnering with us. The chairman himself wanted to come and discuss the contract. I specifically assigned Mika to follow up on the entire process, hoping to give her something to focus on. No matter how strong she is now, hurt is hurt, and its essence doesn't change. Mika however, ended up comforting me instead, don't worry, those rumors won't affect my work, I'm worried about you, not the business, when I blurted out that sentence, we were both a bit surprised, her long eyelashes fluttered a few times, and she nodded slightly, you really care about me, of course, she gave me a deep look and then smiled warmly, on the day the chairman arrived, my partner and I waited at the entrance early, just as we were bringing him into the company, I saw a female colleague arguing with Mika, who do you think you are, just the daughter of a mistress, using her mother's connections to secure a contract for the company. What's so great about that? My heart ached. It was painful for me to hear such words, and Mika had been enduring them for years. Do you really know her? I walked over and shielded Mika behind me. Mika's workability is evident to everyone. Denying her competence because of these rumors, isn't that too much? Now, apologize to her. The colleague stiffened her neck, clearly ready to fight me to the end. Mika patted my arm and winked at me, giving a sly smile. Every time she does that, I feel uneasy. There's no way she doesn't care, she's just putting on a brave face. But the next second, I saw her walk lightly over to the chairman, link arms with him, and say affectionately, Mom, you're here, are you tired? Ah. The room fell silent, and everyone froze. The whispers of disbelief filled the air. She was the daughter of the chairman of the mini group. With Mika's help, the partnership was successfully secured. After sending everyone off, I asked Mika, Why didn't you tell me about your relationship with the chairman? That way. Those nasty rumors wouldn't have spread. She glanced at me, blushed, and quickly lowered her head. Take a guess. I was left speechless. I think I'm starting to understand. Chapter 11. Mika informed me that there was an interested buyer for the house, so I had to go back and move everything out. As I got closer, I felt a strange sense of displacement, as if I were stepping into a different world. Even the ads in the elevator hadn't changed. To my surprise, Nami was still living there. When she saw me, her face lit up with a smile your back. Was work tiring? It's a good thing I bought groceries today. I'll cook, and you can stay for dinner. Okay. Her tone was so natural, as if nothing had ever happened between us. Maybe she didn't realize it, but the more she acted like this, the more it showed how much had already changed between us. Before, she would never speak to me in such a flattering way. She wouldn't buy groceries, much less cook. She was trying to win me back, though I couldn't understand why. No need. I'm just here to move my things. This house has already been sold. Nami stopped what she was doing. Are you really breaking up with me? Are you with Mika now? I nodded. I've always been serious about us breaking up. Didn't you see her? Like a social butterfly. Flitting around those men. You're breaking up with me for her. Looking at Nami, I realized that all these years, I had never really known her. Nami, did Mika really steal things back in school? Did she actually tell you that her mother was a mistress? She still insisted yes, but there was a fleeting moment of guilt in her eyes. Why had Nami become like this? I couldn't understand. Even if we weren't together, I still wanted her to be okay. Nami, you know very well that Mika's mother is the chairman of the mini group. She looked at me in horror, her eyes darting away. I, I couldn't have known that. She had been to Mika's house. How could she not know? How could she bear to hurt her best friend? To harm someone so wonderful? At that moment, my disappointment in her finally reached its peak. I didn't want to say another word to her. Leave. I'll have someone send your things to you. She wavered, leaning against the wall for support her lips trembling. You don't want me anymore? Yes, 
Hero, I, go. I interrupted her. Before I say something I'll regret. She clutched her chest, laughing bitterly. Hero, do you think no one else would want me besides you? She shoved me aside, slamming the door so hard it echoed. The next day, as soon as I arrived at the office, Mika stopped me, pointing to my office. She said Nami was waiting inside. As soon as I pushed the door open, Nami shoved a bright red invitation into my hand. Ken and I are getting married next week. You're invited. Chapter 12. I looked at the invitation and carefully put it away. Congratulations. I meant it sincerely. Nami looked at me in shock, enunciating each word. Hero, I just told you I'm marrying another man, and you congratulate me. Is that all you have to say? I shook my head, signaling that she could leave. Nami said nothing, just stared at me. She finally believed that I truly wanted to break up with her, not as a threat, not as a tantrum. She spoke softly again. Hero, do you really want to break up with me, even if I sincerely admit my mistakes now? Yes, I was absolutely certain. Her whole body stiffened, and through her tears, she searched my face for any sign of reluctance, but there was none. She walked out without a word, her back straight. Mika was standing at the door, looking at me with concern. Did you know back then that it was Nami who spread those rumors? Why didn't you clear it up? She shrugged. There was no need. Nami lost her father when she was young. I didn't want to hurt her further. Mika is too kind, too gentle. Nami understood each of us so well that she manipulated us all. I felt a deep sorrow for Mika, but she said it didn't matter. It was all in the past, and she wouldn't dwell on it. I thought, yes, it's all in the past. We have to look forward, don't we? I glanced at Mika's profile, and the morning sunlight made her face look so beautiful. At that moment, I finally understood my feelings. I like Mika. I spent a long time preparing. Every corner of the quiet restaurant bore traces of my careful arrangement. There were the rabbit dolls she liked, blue roses with dew drops, and Mika, who knew nothing of what was to come. Mika, I like you. I don't want to miss out on you again. Please allow me to love you passionately and sincerely in the days to come. She burst into tears, and I cried along with her. It was wonderful. True lovers will always find a way to be together. Chapter 13 I invited Mika to attend Nami's wedding with me. She looked at me intently, you don't have to go if you don't want to. Everything takes time, and I trust you. I sighed and gently pinched her cheek. It's really okay. The fact that I've confessed my feelings to you means that I've truly moved on. But no matter what, she grew up with me, and I've always hoped she could be happy. The wedding was held in a very shabby little restaurant. The environment was terrible, and the sound of the swona, a traditional Chinese wind instrument, was so loud that it drowned out all conversation. There were no flowers, no red carpet, not even a proper MC just one of Ken's relatives. None of the things Nami had once dreamed of were there. Before the wedding started, Nami, dressed in a cheap wedding dress, came to find me. I could smell the plastic of the dress and see the red rash from an allergic reaction on her shoulders. Hero, are you really just going to watch me marry someone else? If you say you don't want me to, I'll leave with you right now. I didn't respond. She was sobbing uncontrollably. Hero, say something. Just nod. Just nod. She clutched my sleeve, looking at me in desperation. Please please, take me away, I really know I was wrong, congratulations on your wedding, her movement stopped, and she suddenly started laughing, but then, as she laughed, she began to cry again, Ken came over, his face full of anger, and dragged her away, scolding her as they walked off, halfway through the wedding, someone got drunk and started shouting, apparently one of Ken's friends, he was spouting off obscenities, Ken, you lucky bastard, look at the bride's big chest and big ass, come on, tell us, how does it feel, Someone else laughed loudly, egging him on. Nami looked at Ken for help, but he just looked proud, rubbing his fingers together and saying, Of course my girl feels amazing. He didn't seem to think his friend was insulting his wife, if anything. He seemed proud that Nami was being ogled. Nami's face went pale, tears welling up in her eyes. She lowered her head, standing silently, as if she had fallen into a bottomless pit. I didn't want to see any more, so I quickly took Mika and left. Chapter 14 After that I heard less and less about Nami. One day, a friend insisted on dragging me to a bar to celebrate his birthday. I couldn't refuse without dampening the mood, so I went along. To my surprise, I saw Ken with two women on his arms. The women took turns kissing him, making him laugh heartily. He pulled a watch and a bracelet out of his pocket and gave them away without a second thought. I recognized those items, they were things I had bought for Nami. I didn't want to get involved. How they lived their lives was their business, not mine, but I lost any desire to stay. So I made an excuse and left, while waiting by my car for a driver. Ken came out and spotted me. He staggered over. Hero, you drive such a nice car, but what good is being successful if you can't even keep a woman? To me, you're just a failure. I didn't respond to his taunt. Ken, if you're sick, you should drink less. After all, it's your body. If you don't take care of it, 
you're the one who'll suffer. He was clearly very drunk and sneered. I'm not sick. It was all fake. Do you know what a strategist is? The system made me seduce Nami. Your wedding day was my deadline. If I didn't succeed, I would die. But I pulled it off. And now I'm living the high life. You've liked her for so many years. So I guess you'll keep an eye on her. Right. Marrying her wasn't a bad deal at all. I stared at him. Speechless. How much had he drunk? Chapter 15. I couldn't quite grasp Ken's confession. Nor had I ever heard of such a thing before. I had someone look into it. The information came back quickly. Ken had accumulated significant gambling debts. A week before my wedding with Nami, he was nearly beaten to death by debt collectors. He was issued dozens of critical condition notices within two days. The doctors were preparing to give up on saving him. Yet he somehow managed to hold on long enough to show up at my wedding with Nami. Then he took Nami away. The bizarre part was that the next day, Ken was miraculously cured and discharged from the hospital. I had no choice but to believe what he said was true, that life and death were at the mercy of some system. So Ken's claim of having cancer was a lie, but the debt was real. I should have explained all this to Nami, but I also knew she wouldn't believe me, not a single word. In this tug-of-war of emotions, I lost, but not to Ken's scheming. It was simply because Nami didn't love me enough, but it's okay because now I have someone who loves me. I moved to a new place and started living with Mika. We were very happy together. I didn't hide what Ken had told me from Mika, and she was just as shocked as I was. One day, while we were cooking together, Nami showed up. I had no idea how she found our address. She seemed uneasy, hesitating to speak. I waited patiently. Mika, curious, called out from the living room. Hero, who's at the door? Why don't they come in? Nami stammered. I, I came to find a photo. It wasn't among the things you returned to me. Maybe it's still here. I let her in, and we searched the study together. We eventually found it inside a fairy tale book. It was a photo we had taken on the first day she moved into our home as a child. Nami carefully touched the photo, thanked me, and started to leave. I quickly turned to Mika and reassured her. I'm sorry. It must have been packed by mistake. You believe me, right? She laughed and patted me on the shoulder. Relax. Don't be silly. But don't you think Nami seemed off? Did you notice the bruises on her arms? Should we check on her? I nodded and took her with me downstairs. A crowd had gathered, pointing and whispering. Ken's angry voice echoed, I told you to get money, and you bring back a photo, what the hell is this good for, those debt collectors are at our doorstep, and you're trying to get me killed, Hero is loaded, why didn't you just ask him for it, are you going or not, as he spoke, he slapped Nami hard, knocking her to the ground, Nami didn't make a sound, closing her eyes and silently enduring Ken's punches, Mika tugged on my sleeve, should we help her, I pulled out my phone, called the police, and requested an ambulance, Mika looked at me in confusion. I explained. Giving them money would only enable Ken and keep them tied together. This is the only way to help her. I watched as they led Nami and Ken away. She'll figure it out. Nami isn't stupid. She's always loved herself too much. I turned to Mika and sincerely thanked her. Thank you. Thank you for always thinking of me first. Chapter 16. Since that day, I haven't seen or heard about Nami and Ken, nor have I sought any news of them. I cherish every day with Mika. We visited our old school though we couldn't find any trace of our old classroom. Still, we were happy because it was where we had first met. We went horseback riding together in the summer. She looked so gallant, and she said I was so graceful. We left our love on the vast prairie. In winter, we went to the snow-capped mountains, bundled up like little cotton balls, huddled close together. We made love in the warmth of our home and made a wish to return with our children in five years. When Mika and I decided to get married, I went to see her parents alone, sought their opinion and got their approval along with the family register, at an outdoor restaurant, in front of our friends and family, and under a shower of falling petals, I knelt on one knee and said to her, Mika, I love you very, very much, will you marry me? She burst into tears, held out her hand, and said, yes, I will. Our wedding was held in the height of summer, there were beautiful flower arches, the most beautiful wedding dress, and everything I wanted to give her, as I carried Mika out of the car, I thought I saw a familiar figure in the crowd, but when I looked again, there was no one. I didn't pay it any mind and carried Mika forward with confident strides. Nami's Side Story Chapter 1 In the second semester of my sophomore year, a transfer student named Mika joined our class. She was very quiet and extremely beautiful, but I didn't like her because the first person she looked at when she walked in was Hiro. She didn't have any friends, so I slowly started to approach her. It wasn't difficult, I knew she wanted to ask me about Hiro, but Hiro was mine. He could only be mine. So as soon as we got a bit closer, I began subtly and openly telling her that Hiro was my boyfriend. Watching her look disappointed made me feel great. So what if she had money? She was still just a loser. I pretended to casually tell my classmates. Mika seems to have stolen something of mine. Didn't I mention that I lost a panda keychain the other day? 
I found it in Mika's backpack. It's not right, but as her friend, I can't confront her. It's so frustrating. My classmates were outraged. And soon, rumors of her stealing spread everywhere. I didn't feel guilty at all. She was a thief, trying to steal Hiro from me. Many classmates warned me not to hang out with Mika. And even Hiro told me to stay away from her. But I wouldn't. I had to keep an eye on her. Make sure she disappeared for good. Mika never walked home with me after school. A luxury car would come to pick her up. Some classmates speculated that her family must be very wealthy. I hesitated before saying, don't mention this to Mika because of her mom. She doesn't like to talk about it. The gossip spread like wildfire. Exactly as I wanted. People started saying that Mika's mom was a rich man's mistress. I comforted Mika, telling her not to mind. But she would always just smile at me without saying a word. I pretended to stay calm. Soon, she transferred schools. And I finally felt at ease. Chapter 2. Hiro was always very considerate toward me. Gentle like water. And always looking after me, telling me to drink more water. Not to stay out late. Sometimes, it annoyed me. But Ken was different, always rebellious. With a carefree attitude, I was deeply captivated by the way he looked at me with those clear eyes. He said, a girl who hasn't skipped class isn't complete. He said, a girl who hasn't sneaked into an internet cafe isn't complete. He said, a girl who hasn't slept with a guy in high school isn't complete. He really knew a lot. He knew exactly what I wanted. I didn't want to follow so many rules. Nor did I care about going to a good school. After all, Hiro would take care of me. So it made sense that I fell in love with Ken, didn't it? When Ken wanted to break up with me, I completely panicked. Nami, I have nothing, no family background like Hiro, no good grades like Hiro, so you should be with him. For the first time, I fought with Hiro because of his controlling nature. When I ran out of the house, I felt a sense of freedom, so when Ken offered to take me for a ride, I agreed. But that day, I had a car accident so severe that I was bedridden for five years. Hiro took care of me for those five years. He kept saying he was sorry for not going out to look for me the night I ran away. The more he said it, the more I started to believe it was his fault. I was afraid he wouldn't take care of me anymore. So I kept telling him, Hero, when I get better, I'll marry you. I'll wear the most beautiful wedding dress and be the most beautiful bride. And you'll give me the most perfect wedding. But the day before our wedding, Ken asked to see me. Nami, I'm sorry I haven't visited you. I have cancer. I don't have long. I heard you're getting married. Here's the money I've saved over the years. Not much. Just 80,000 yuan. I'm giving it all to you. I hope you'll be happy. I was resentful toward him, but he was dying. Yet the next day, Ken appeared at the wedding, looking weak, and I realized I wasn't angry anymore. I wanted to spend his last days with him. Hero would surely understand, we had a whole lifetime ahead of us. Chapter 3 I never expected to see Mika again, let alone that Hero would break up with me for her. I questioned Hero again and again, unable to believe that he wouldn't tolerate me like he used to. I married Ken out of spite. Strangely, Despite Ken's serious illness, he recovered after we got married. I was happy for him. Since Hiro no longer wanted me, I had to find my own happiness. But not long after the wedding, a large group of people came to our house demanding money from Ken. It turned out Ken had been hiding his gambling habit from me. He took all my jewelry and savings. But it was far from enough. Ken started hitting me, demanding that I ask Hiro for money. It hurt so much that I swallowed my pride and went to ask. But when I saw Mika there, I couldn't bring myself to do it. Chapter 4. I secretly attended Hiro and Mika's wedding. Everything was more perfect than I had ever imagined. They looked so right together. I slipped away quietly. For more than two years, no matter how much Ken beat or scolded me, I never went to see them again. One day, when I got home from work, the door was open, and I heard embarrassing moans coming from inside. This wasn't the first time Ken had brought a woman home, but suddenly, I couldn't bear it anymore. I went to find Hiro again. Life had worn me down to the point where I had no shame left. Uncle and auntie were there too, they had aged so much, their hair graying at the temples. I hung my head in embarrassment, tears streaming down my face. Uncle said, come in, if you need help, come home. I may be old, but I can still stand up for you. It felt like a slap in the face, and I was overwhelmed with shame. What had I been doing all these years? How could I have hurt these people who genuinely loved me? The divorce was actually quite easy. Ken tried to demand a huge sum, but after going through legal procedures, he only got a portion of our marital assets. Ken wasn't just an ordinary person, he was an extremely vile one, and I had put him on a pedestal. I sincerely bowed to Mika. I'm sorry for what I did to you before. I hope you can forgive me. She smiled quietly, just like she used to. I never blamed you. Congratulations. And I hope you live well. I got a new job. And I visit uncle and auntie whenever I can. Life is now stable and fulfilling. 